Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon White 2, and this is part 12. So, in this part, we will actually start off somewhat different. We will start off with a little tour of Castelia City. I mentioned in the last part that I was going to explore Castelia City a little bit at the beginning, so here we are. So, first off, one thing I want to show you is if we go into the gym, if we go toward the gym, we get this to happen. So, if we speak to this guy, we obviously can't go in. So, this guy is mentioning that Berg is, is, has, vanished, has sensed trouble with his magical spider sense and has dashed off. And here comes Iris! Wow, it's been a while since we've seen Iris. <laughs> I think she was a gym leader in, in White 1, but now all of a sudden she's appearing to help us in the search for Team Plasma, apparently. And of course, Berg is uh, always getting artist block, and he has to always wander out of the gym anyway. But this is cool. So apparently, Iris is going to is going to go search for team for Team Plasma, and she's going to run off. But I'm not going to follow her just yet because there are other things in Castelia City that I want to see so far. But this I found was kind of interesting. So after we explore Castelia City a little bit, we'll eventually be encountering Team Plasma further. So let's go find out what else there is, shall we? And also, of course, we have all these vending machines scattered throughout the city. This is where you can buy fresh waters, like the ones we get in the gyms, and also soda pops and lemonades, which can end up restoring a lot of HP to a Pokémon, so I really like these. But I'm not gonna worry about that too much. But more importantly, if we go down this alley here, which is Narrow Street, I think it's called Narrow Street anyway, we'll encounter a guy who was shocked because he dropped his sunglasses! So, he'll actually give us something for free, and it's not a Black Glasses, which is what I originally thought it was, but it's actually a TM for Flash. And this, of course, will help us light up dark places, and it used to be an HM, but now it's a TM for some weird reason. Which is good, because that means we can actually have a Pokémon forget it without a specialty person. But we also have this cafe here, and if you bring the, the legendary Pokémon Meloetta here, then you'll actually have- it, then Meloetta can learn its specialty move, which is Relic Song. And I actually did get Meloetta in, a, in an event in Black 2, so that was kinda neat. But it's level 50, so it'll be a long time before I would want to use it. But if we also talk to this owner here, then we'll get a free Moo Moo Milk, which is pretty cool because that'll restore 100 HP, I believe. So I'm gonna save that for later, definitely. So, other than that, there's not really that much in Narrow Street, but there is another alleyway that's also really important, which is the next street over, which is Mode Street, which I mentioned before is, the, is also the French word for ice cream. So if we go down Mode Street, of course, one of the buildings here is this is this gallery. If I can get into this gallery from this damn bike. That's one thing I hate about bicycles. It's always hard to dismount them to get into a building. But this guy here actually was a Harlequin, I believe, in Black and White 1. And if we show him a Pokemon of a certain type, which unfortunately is Psychic, and I haven't caught any Psychic-type Pokemon yet, then it'll actually give us a berry of our choice, which is kind of nice. So basically the same thing that we did in Black and White 1. But also, the building across from it is the is where we get Castelia cones, and you notice that it's not actually that crowded this time around. There actually is no line to get into this, and they can get these Castelia cones any day of the week rather than just Tuesday or something, which is I think it was in Black and White 1. So here we can not only buy them individually, but we can buy 12 at a time as well if we like. And these, of course, will have the same effect as full heals, except I think they're cheaper than full heals, so that'll be kind of nice. That's another interesting thing about Mode Street. And here we have a random guy just stopping by because he saw me shopping at this ice cream shop, because apparently it isn't as popular as it used to be. So that was kind of a neat change over from Black and White 1. So another thing interesting in Castelia City is down this street here, and I forgot what the name of this street is, go figure, it's been a long time since I've really looked at the signs here. But if you go into this building on the second floor, well, there are a few interesting things here. First of all, there's this girl off to the left here, where if you talk to her, you'll she'll give you a TM for rest. And that is actually a pretty good healing move. The only downside is that you have to wait to- is that the Pokémon using it will fall asleep for two turns after healing all its HP and status. But if you use a Chesto Berry, as that girl mentioned, then the Pokémon will wake up instantly. So that's kind of a neat little trick to master. But that's about it for this building right here, then you just get a Herdier you get to talk to. Because who doesn't love talking to Herdiers? And anyway, another building of, uh, of importance here is this building down here, which is the Game Freak building. Yup, they always have to put the Game Freak building in every single one of these Pokémon games, because Game Freak is, is, is the main developers behind this game. 
So in addition to- well, this building serves pretty much the same function as it did back in Red and Blue, in which you'll get to talk to the developers and they'll give you a prize if you complete the Pokedex, or, or at least that's what I think what happens. They may have deferred that role to Professor Juniper by now. But besides that, there's a couple of new features. If you talk to these guys over here, well, not this person, but these other two guys in here, they'll actually challenge you to Pokemon battles. And you can keep entering these battles every day, and it's a pretty good way to increase the experience of, of my Pokemon. I think that guy up, 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 up to the north of me has, a, has the three elemental monkeys, and the guy to my left has a Clefairy with a Leftovers item. So they're pretty interesting battles to get into, but... Other, but they're but they're only at level 16, 17 ish, so maybe they're not good experience for the higher level Pokemon. But still something. Also, in this street up here is another opportunity to get some more free stuff. For example, in this building over here, which I like to call the party building, because the guy on the top floor is hosting a party, as you could tell by all the people who have been invited here. If you talk to this girl over here, she'll give you another TM. And this is a TM for Retract, which is a move I like to keep on uh, whatever Pokémon I'm not using. I currently have an Escavalier with Attract for some reason in Black 2, just because I don't have any other popular spots for moves on Escavalier. And of course you have all these people who will speak different languages as well, so that's kind of fun. So also, we have another building across the way here in which... Uh, at which there's this guy on the first floor, which will give you a free amulet coin. And that, of course, will double the prize money that you earn from a trader battle, which is really good for obtaining money. So that's kind of useful. And finally, in this building off to the right, over here... If I could even get into the building, come on, can I enter the building? Thank you. On the second floor of this building, you'll have a guy who can tell you about the gym badges in Unova, and you get a free charcoal lying on the ground, which will power up any fire attacks your Pokémon knows. So that's it for the streets of Castelia City. Let's see what else we can find, shall we? Uh, where should we go next? Oh hey, there's Iris, right by the Pokémon Center, and she's going to a place called Thumb Pier, which is apparently where Team Plasma is, and that of course is a direct reference for to the fact that Castelia City is in the shape of a hand. But this is not Thumb Pier, this I guess is Index Pier or whatever. And this ship right here is called the Royal Unova. It's a ship that you can go on in the evening and you get all these traders you can battle, so that's another good way to obtain experience. And you even get prize money if you defeat all the trainers in that ship, so that's also interesting. And ooh, I got a medal, what medal did I get? Let's see what medal I got. It's the Starter Cycling Medal, which I guess is the medal that you get for riding on your bike a lot. And why is there a girl blocking me from healing at a Pokémon Center? How rude. How rude! And I don't care about Geonet, that's another multiplayer thing. <laughs> how in- how- how inconsiderate. My favorite is Sowattle? Well, Sowattle's cute! Uh, I don't think Sowattle's my favorite Pokémon, but I like Sowattle, and I know Berg likes Sowattle too. But anyway, at this Pokemon here, we have all these different kinds of Pokeballs here. We have Heal Balls, and Net Balls, and Nest Balls. And I'll explain what those do later, since we're still on a tour right now. So if we go down... So let's actually look at some of these piers over here while we're at it. This pier, I think, will actually be really important. This is Liberty Pier. And this pier is actually, is actually in honor of the legendary Pokemon Victini. Which, unlike the other legendary Pokemon, actually comes before the other Pokemon in the Pokedex. In fact, I would almost call it Pokémon number zero in the Pokédex, a number that was formerly only assigned to Missing Mo. So if we can, so if we hop on the ship here, we can actually go to Liberty Garden. Although I don't think we can actually encounter Victini without some sort of special event. But hey, at least we can visit Liberty Garden. And I don't know, if, I don't even know if you were able to do this in Black and White One. Maybe this is something new to Black and White Two, where we could just visit Liberty Garden without doing anything else. I don't even know if that's true or not. But in Liberty Garden, there's not really anything too important anyway. We basically have all these people we can talk to. There's this lighthouse in the center of town. There's not really anything interesting. And as I just mentioned, Victini will not appear here just yet. And other than that, this is just, a, I guess, a good place to meet people or something. I don't, I don't really know. And these people are not really saying anything much. I originally thought that there was an item we can get over here, but I guess maybe I'm wrong somehow. I guess. I don't know. Actually, let's see what's inside the lighthouse while we're here. I don't think this lighthouse is going to be as exciting as the lighthouse in Olivine City in Johto, which was pretty interesting to explore back in the days of gold and silver. 
Yeah, this lighthouse is really boring, and for some reason had this has this bedroom at the end, and this is, I think, where Victini actually appears if you get the Victini event to occur. To occur. So, that's a nice little tour of Liberty Garden. I mean, there's not really anything special to it. So I think right now we could just head back to Castellia City and continue the tour. Okay, wasn't that a great tour of Castellia City? Yeah, I figured do, just doing a tour of the city and just doing post-commentary during that part seems to work a lot better than me just aimlessly wandering around a city like that. But anyway, as you as you probably pointed out during the tour, Iris was standing right here and she directed me to this thumb pier, which is like at the very edge of Castellia City. So let's see what's on that pier, and let's see what this lady has to say first, just in case she gives me any free stuff. I guess not. And of course my emulator is slowing down, probably because of all the 3D stuff in Castellia City. I don't think it'll slow slow down like that during a battle, although it mysteriously did, I think, in part, I think in part two of this Let's Play. So from here we have a we actually have a new location that that uh, that is that is featured in this in, in this game. This this location wasn't here before, and that is the sewers, which is actually off of this pier right here. And the sewers are a completely new place. There are new Pokemon in it, even though I don't like the Pokemon that are in there at all. And you'll see why I say that in just a few minutes, hopefully. So Lettuce is asking me if we found Team Plasma, which so far we didn't. But yeah, that means the only place I still haven't checked is the sewers, right? That means we actually have to go into the sewers to catch the bad guys. Well, gee, this is sounding familiar to me. In my Let's Play of Earthbound, which is the other Let's Play I'm working on right now, we just went into the sewers to find a bad guy, and now we're doing it again in this game. Although in that case, the bad guy was a uh, Plague Rat of Doom, is what the enemy was called, and I mistook it for a Wild Radicate at first. And in the sewers, there actually are Wild Radicate, and I shouldn't be spoiling that, should I? But, yep, the sewers are a perfect place for hiding. Yeah, so now apparently we're supposed to go with Linus into the sewers. And this is actually a pretty cool portion of this game, as you'll see in just a bit. Minerva, I need you to get tougher. Even I'm gonna have trouble taking them all, all on all by myself. Anyway, it's okay. I'll take care of healing our Pokemon. So, what we're supposed to do now is we're actually teaming up with Linus. See how Linus is following me around? But this is cool because I think uh, this is actually a partnership mission, like the ones that were started in, I think, Diamond and Pearl, in which we get a party member following us around who helps us with battles. So every battle we encounter from here on out will be a double battle, and he'll just heal my Pokemon in between. So we can battle like all the wild Pokemon we want, and we'll just be healed right afterward. Which is good, because I don't really like the Pokemon that are in this place. Now, the thing about these sewers is that it is winter right now, and the sewers are all dried up. There is no water in them. In the spring and summer, the sewers will actually be full with water. So we'll notice that change when it becomes spring. But right now it's winter, and in winter and fall, the sewers are dry. And here's a wild Pokemon. Let's see what new Pokemon's in it. It's Rattata. A couple of Rattata. See, see what did I tell you just earlier about wild Raticate appearing in this, in this, in these sewers? Well, it's not wild Raticate, but it's wild Rattata, which is close enough, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll battle these Rattatas. Maybe I won't. I guess Lassie can use some experience. Maybe I'll cut this out or something. So that was pretty cool. Lassie gained a little bit of experience, and and Lydus' Servine was actually very helpful in Ah. Oh, but here's another Pokemon that can, uh, that can appear in the sewers. This is Grimer. Grimer actually appears relatively rarely in the sewers. But, so I'm surprised that one's appearing now. I don't know if I'll be battling these ones yet. Perhaps I, I should probably run away from this battle, just because that Grimer's attacks are going to be super effective against Servine. Servine being Grass-type and all. But here we have a Twisted Spoon, which will boost the power of Psychic attacks that none of my Pokémon know, except for Nitori, of course. <laughs> Maybe I should have put Nitori in the party, and I should have had her use that, but whatever. I don't think I'm too concerned about it. Here we have more Rattatas, and this is another battle I'll just cut out. And Lassie fainted by a critical hit Hyper Fang over there, but I'm not too concerned about it. Yeah, I think I'll just keep Lassie first for the party, because I think she'll evolve on the next level up anyway. So we can't go over here to the left yet, because this boy is gonna be dropping- is gonna be blocking our path. In fact, I forgot which way I was supposed to go. Ah! Okay, so here's another Pokemon that can appear in the sewers, actually. This is actually Zubat, and this is the reason why I hate these sewers in the first place. It's because there are friggin' wild Zubat in these sewers. 
seriously, one thing I liked about Black and White 1 was that they didn't have Zubat in any of the caves before defeating the champion. Well, they had Blue Bat, and that was kind of similar, but still, no Zubats. That's the one thing I liked, and now all of a sudden they brought Zubat back. Why the heck did they bring Zubat back? I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Ah, well, I just gotta battle these Pokemon anyway, so we'll see you in a bit. And yay! Lassie got to level 16, which I think means that she will evolve. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Yeah! Lassie is evolving! And of course, those of you who've seen my Let's Play of Pokemon White 1 know exactly what she's going to evolve into. She's going to become a Herdier. Surprise, surprise. Which is the same Pokemon that we encountered back in Flockacy Ranch. But yay, she's a Herdier. She's no longer a cute little Lillipop. She actually became more... Okay, never mind. I won't call Lassie ugly. But yay, she's a Herdier. I think she's actually the first of my Pokemon to evolve. Was she? I don't know. No, actually, that wasn't. That was Lumina, because she evolved into Flappy that one time. But here's an X Special Defense, and I don't really use X items that much. That'll basically raise Special Defense just for one battle. Ah. But I still don't use them that much anyway, and I think it just occurred to me that I am going the wrong way. The way I'm supposed to go, I think, is up. Down, up these stairs right here. Ah. And I actually do want to catch a Zubat this time around. And the reason being is that it actually will evolve into a pretty good Pokémon eventually. And that'll be another one of those happiness evolution Pokémon. But right now, I guess I'll switch to, oh, I don't know, Nico being first in the party. Just because he can use the experience and all. But the way I think we're supposed to go is actually up here. And, uh, yeah, there's T Plasma grows up there. Ah! Wow, that was a pretty long battle, but fortunately I was able to cut most of it out, but more importantly, here is a Team Plasma Grunt, so we're gonna have to battle them next. What? Don't treat us like villains, even though we totally are! And don't interfere with our plans to liberate Pokémon, just like N failed to do. Ah! You're just ordinary Pokémon thieves! And what's more, you use those stolen Pokémon like they're tools. Like every evil organization does. Yeah, let's team up and battle these Team Plasma Grunts! during this song that I don't know how to sing along to. Seriously. Okay, I'll try. Let us defeat these Team Plasma Grunts. They are using Scrabbies and Dial. I don't know which attacks they'll use. But I will use Growl just in case that'll lower their attack power. I know, and so I have just lost track of the music because I don't know this song at all. That was cool. Servine one hit KO the sound dial. Let's see if we can do the same to Scraggy. Nico's pursuit will not be very effective! Servine, why are you using growth? I don't know this song at all, wow. What will assist become? I guess that Thunder Wave helped. Just Scraggy was still be paralyzed, so it cannot do anything that turned. What now? Scraggy fainted, yay! And Nika got to level 16! <laughs> okay, I always like singing along to the Team Plasma Grunt song, and even though it changed a little, it has the same tune, so I guess that was not as bad as I really expected. And the Team Bra Plasma Grunts are gonna flee like the little cowards they are. They're gonna run away like Pat Rat, as Linus put it. And who is talking to us now? It's Berg! Oh my gosh, it's Berg! Hi, Berg! Do you remember me? Hello! Hello! Yes, sir! One of us say, I'm Berg, and there is no one suspicious beyond here. Is that so? Yes, indeedy! Indeedy! Oh my gosh, I love the way he says indeedy. Berg, oh my gosh, I'm falling in love with you all over again. This is awesome. I'm concerned about Team Plasma as well. More importantly, shall we leave this place? I don't really love the sewers. They're bugging me. Oh, oh you. You use bug-type Pokemon. If you say they're bugging you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Really? Thanks for your help. Here, use this. And what are you giving me? Yay! An HM for strength! 
Not only will that help us clear boulders later on, and I don't know if we can use it now. Actually, I think in this game there are no requirement of how many badges we need to get before we can use an HM. We can just use them. We just do don't usually get them until we until we get a certain badge or something. So that's cool. Not only can we use cut, but we can use strength as well. Unfortunately, I don't think there will be any there will be any strength boulders in our way for a little while, so I don't think we'll have to worry about that yet, but it will be a good physical attack than a better Pokemon can use. In fact, I'll probably teach it to Lassie. He's gone. You there! Uh-oh. Somebody else is talking to us. Oh, that guy. This is a new character for, who appears in Black 2 and White 2, and I think he's uh, allied with Team Plasma, if I remember correctly, but I don't know his full story, especially since I haven't completed Black 2 yet, so I, uh, so I haven't even found out about him at all yet either. In Black 2, I think I have six badges currently, so I'm not really that far along yet. That was an excellent demonstration of battling. The way you brought out the power of your Pokémon against an opponent like Team Plasma? Astounding. Simply astounding. Interesting as well. I see. And who are you? You are not even going to tell us who we are, and Berg is just as confused as I am? Who was that? You tell me, Berg. You're the smart one, right? Well, no matter. What are you going to do? Are you going to challenge me at my gym? Well, uh... How about a, a, a date before we do? Never mind. You can stay here and train your Pokemon, or maybe you should come challenge me, the gym leader. Well, I am going to stay in the sewers for a while, actually, because I said I, they said before that I was going to try to catch a Zubat, but I think we're out of time. I think uh, the, my, our tour of Castelia City will take up a little time, so I think I'll have to save that for the next part of this Let's Play. So, in the next part of Let's Play Pokemon White 2, we will catch a Zubat and see what happens from there, I guess. Yeah, so we'll say goodbye for now, and my emulator always lags for some reason when it's about to save. But see you later, everybody! Stay tuned for my favorite number, part 13.